The future of physics is bright, thanks to a new game that looks set to push things to the next level. Teardown is an upcoming game that does away with traditional techniques and instead builds its worlds out of voxels. But with physics, buoyancy and all the other things required to make them behave the way you'd expect for them to behave. The result is a world that acts like the real world, only more blocky. This game is being developed by Dennis Gustafsson, who you can follow on Twitter under the name Tuxedo Labs. He seems like a one-man army who's a master of all sorts of cutting-edge technologies, all of which he's lovingly cramming into this one title. Teardown's selling point might be its physics, but everything about it seems cutting-edge. The audio, the lighting, the volumetric effects, etc. It is indeed shaping up to be an extremely exciting project that I can't wait to get my hands on. But I'm not just going to use this video to scream at the physics in this game with fake sounding enthusiasm. I'll save that for my spare time, thank you very much. Instead, I'm going to go through the progress reports he's posted on Twitter, as it will help you to get a feel for how this project has evolved since its inception. Conception. Whatever. He started with other games. One that comes to mind is Smash Hit, a mobile game from 2014. Despite all this, it already had cutting edge procedural damage. It's here we see hints to his obsession with destruction. Fast forward to late 2017 and he was busy messing about with lighting and lobbing glowy orbs at trains, as you do. This phase lasted through till early 2018 and then he began work on reflections, and then depth of field. He cleverly switched to ray tracing in a warped space to give more love to the centre of the screen and less to the edges where people don't notice stuff as much. Eventually he had done it, he had developed a room, fully lit in real time and littered with physics blocks everywhere. Having peaked so soon, what else was there to do? Then suddenly, out of nowhere less than a month later on June the 13th, 2018, he posted a video of a fully destructible house, and with it, Teardown's journey as a recognisable game about physics began. Even in this early state, the buildings could be smashed apart and bits no longer connected to everything else would collapse convincingly. By the end of the month, that house had become a village. He optimised the piles of debris and had added sound effects to give it all a satisfying, creepy atmosphere. And just like that, it already had better physics than most games out there. Over the coming weeks and months, he posted more videos of more destruction in more elaborate looking environments, no doubt thanks to his past obsessions and experiments. He then decided to prove a colleague wrong by showing how bad a lighting system based on voxels would be. In the process he made an awesome lighting system based on voxels, full of beams of light and stuff. It then all took an interesting and dark turn as he moved it to a film noir style. He experimented with volumetric fog, which may not sound that important in a game about destruction, but as he carves his way through a building, the rooms fill up with thick dust and beautiful beams of light. He then added explosives. I'm impressed by how restrained he was with these. Sure, they would blow out a sizeable chunk of the room, but what impressed me the most was how they interacted with the debris from previous explosions. As to be expected from him by now, he did the unexpected by jumping to something completely different, programming in sinister, procedurally animated people who could respond to noises in an eerily convincing manner. As we all know, this isn't the route the project ultimately went down, but I feel in an alternate reality somewhere, this game took a sinister and spooky route. Within weeks, he was putting major studios to shame by developing AI that could navigate a fully destructible environment. This stuff was incredible. So naturally, all of this stuff magically disappeared again as he moved back to working on the physics, adding different materials and bigger explosions to his project. I particularly like this one, where an explosion smashes the walls and cracks the outer plaster in a super juicy way. The physics reached another important milestone in December of 2018 as he added plastic joints to simulate, you guessed it, wood. This is a big improvement. Stuff is no longer simply static until it's destroyed. It will twist and warp, bend and deform. It behaves more like real stuff, becoming even better than the stuff that we saw in Red Faction Gorilla. Also, he discovered this voxel stuff made simulating buoyancy super easy, as demonstrated in this splashy, sploshy, bangy, wangy example just here. A little unrelated to the game, but perhaps fundamental to understanding his genius, he and a fellow person discussed how rubbish ray tracing looked in real life, and no doubt came up with a dozen ways to integrate this into their projects in some misunderstood yet genius way. It's here that he began to obsess about noise. Believe me, I've read and reread his blog about this stuff. I even skimmed it on Wikipedia, so I'm something of an expert. But even I don't quite understand the complexities and trade-offs that different colours of noise bring. 
but it sounds as though he's a fan of blue noise combined with the golden ratio to make for the finest quality noise, just for us. He uses this together with temporal anti-aliasing to remove speckles from water and reflections. Rather ominously, he did tweet that if you think RTX sounds expensive, voxels are worse. Maybe hold off upgrading for a bit, just in case. By early 2019, it was starting to take shape as the thing it is today. The hammer was added, the audio was given super realistic acoustic modelling, and it pretty much became a functioning game, albeit without purpose. Aside from blowing stuff up. From here, the project went from strength to strength. By March, he had added drivable vehicles that could be ploughed through the buildings, and which would sustain damage themselves. A few weeks later, he added planks to repair the damage inflicted, but he discovered it was more fun to construct completely new structures out of them instead. He even discovered that he could nail them to giant spiders. Oh, I didn't mention it? He added giant spiders to the game. They follow you and try to fit through doorways and their super spindly legs get everywhere. In VR, it would probably feel like they're probing into your mouth and stuff. I'm happy I don't have a phobia of spiders, even after that incident where I accidentally rubbed one across my body and it bit me several times. So I can only imagine how horrifying this is for its maker, Dennis, who claims he has arachnophobia. Perhaps somewhat thankfully, in one of his many U-turns, these spiders suddenly disappeared from the game again as he turned his focus to volumetric smoke that interacts with the surroundings. He cruelly trapped it underneath a board before shooting small holes in it to let bits of it escape. I mean, this could have been a game as well, couldn't it? Where you're a fireman who has to enter burning buildings and to extinguish the fires at their source before they reach strategically placed explosive barrels dotted all over the place. This guy sees the good in everything, doesn't he? With a backhanded compliment, he wonders if he could use the rubbishy Twitter video compression to denoise the smoke effects in his game. Next gen strat. By August, he had procedurally generated buildings, so the PC does the hard work and he just knocks it all down again. Kind of the opposite way around to normal computer programming, if you think about it. September saw him add these stringy, bouncy cables. It's cool enough to see them interacting with the wooden posts, but he then posted another video where he hooked them to the back of a truck, pulled it back like a slingshot, then let go. If you think that projectile should have done more damage, you're not alone. Dennis says he's disabled damage from these things because of performance reasons, but will hopefully add it back in automatically later on. And then he took a break from the carnage to add spray paint. Whatever will this mad lad do next? In October, he uploaded a YouTube video announcing the game Teardown. With these physics, he chose to make it into a game where you needed to collect keycards dotted across a level. The catch being that, after you take the first one, you only had limited time to get the rest of them before security arrives. The trick is not to pick up your first keycard until you've destroyed and altered the level in such a way that will allow for you to move between the rest of the keycards as quickly as possible. I like this, because it means you can spend unlimited time dicking about in the level if you want to. But what's this about security? Are we talking about guards here? Spiders? Also, you have guns. It sounds like there's more to the action than simply destroying things. But he's keeping quiet about this. Apart from in a video he released just after showing an evil helicopter shooting holes through the place they're supposed to protect. Even AI can't resist the destruction in this game, it seems. And he's continued his work on the vehicles, crushing them, using them after they've been crushed, showing at least a hundred reasons for why he should never be given control of an articulated lorry, and lastly, how to get skid marks on walls whilst burying into the ground, at the same time. And at the end of November, it was shown at Dreamhack Winter, where it was labelled as Best Strategy. What's next for this game? Well, you can follow his progress on Twitter, on the website, on the Steam page, or you can subscribe to him on YouTube right here. The game is due out in 2020. I wish him all the best and can't wait to tear down the game he's spent years lovingly building up.